Hi everybody, Menachem Brody here again from Human Vortex Training LLC based out of beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We had a fairly nice weekend here, uh, just passed, except for Saturday. The weatherman said 45 and sunny, and it was 37 and snowing pretty hard. Go figure. Well, uh, I got a lot of positive feedback from that post of the, the mental training lecture. That was uh, just a couple of short excerpts from the uh, University of Pittsburgh cycling team's presentation. I give a presentation uh, frequently to the club. Uh, every preseason, I like to do mental training, mental coaching. Um, and there are a lot of different resources out there that you can use to help. Um, but I include that in every single block, and I include in every single communication with each athlete a little bit of mental coaching. And that's something that is really important and that really is the winning edge. The, the exercise physiology and the strength and conditioning, if you're not here, uh, the body doesn't necessarily matter because you can completely psych yourself out of an incredible performance when physiologically you're there. So it's something that I strongly recommend. Uh, you can pick up Bobby McGee's book, which if you guys remember in week two or week three, I mentioned in the coaches Ask Coach segment about some books, Bobby McGee's Magical Running. Uh, that's just a starting point for you. Uh, you can hire an expert professional coach such as myself to help you with that side of things. And I've gone to offer that as a, a standalone uh, now at this point in my business because in my coaching, I realize that it's just that mental coach. Uh, portion that's, that's missing. So I really like to focus on that with all of the athletes and it's something that you should think about. But as you can see by the title above, today we're going to talk about tire pressure and tires. Really important uh, to know about tires is, is that there are different tires out there and I've seen time and again road cyclists, cyclocross, mountain bike, um, triathletes focusing and riding the wrong tire pressure. And what's wrong with that is that you're putting yourself at, at risk for, slighter risk for injury. Um, you're not getting the best handling capabilities out of your bike and your tire, and you're causing yourself to waste energy. The whole mantra here and the whole saying here at Human Vortex Training is train smarter, not harder. And we don't have guys like Samson McHugh here qualifying for nationals because they're just going out and riding aimlessly. Uh, he's riding smart, training hard, but, but doing it the smartest way possible. What's the minimal amount of highest quality training that we can get in to help you develop? So your tires can take a lot away from that. So um, the reason I'm talking about this is when I was beginning, I was really into like tire pressure and I was always, I'm always a heavier rider. I'm 197 and a half right now. So I'm a big dude. I don't like climbs. <laughs> if you take me out on climbs, I'll start at the front, go to the back. Um, but it's really important to have the right tire pressure uh, because it's going to allow your handling on the bike to get better, the effort that you put to the pedals to get to the road, and it's going to dampen the road vibration. So make it a smoother ride for you. So that goes for both. If you're running your pressure too high, the bike's not going to corner as well. It's going to be a bouncier ride um, and you're going to be wasting effort. It's almost like trying to start on a hill. For those few of you out there who have driven an automatic or a manual versus an automatic car, it's like trying to start in second gear. You might be able to do it if the hill is not too bad, but it ain't going anywhere fast. Um, whereas if the tire pressure is low, um, not only will you have uneven tread wear, but you're going to have, it's going to feel like you're pedaling through mud or sand. And you may not even know if, if you're sitting there and you're using the, the wrong tire pressure, you may not know this until we put you in the right tire pressure for you. So really, really important. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, I want to start off with the different tires. There are trainer tires and road tires. And the road tires are, are, are different in that they have a tread on them, which hopefully you guys can see here. So it actually has a nice little tread. This is the Vittoria Rubino Pro. This is my personal selection uh, for a clincher tire for the spring, winter, and fall. Uh, I like how it has a nice smooth, um, you know, there's only about that much rubber on the road. So there's a smooth patch in the middle with a little bit of, of tread on the side to bring the water away and help with the cornering. Um, and remember, the tire is the only thing, and Michelin has a great ad, and we'll see something, uh, a chart here from Michelin as well. Uh, the tire is really the only thing that's keeping you on the road, and it's maybe the size of your thumb that's in contact or your pinky, and that's it. Nothing else on your bike is in contact with the road. That's your only point of contact or uh, the six to eight square inches of, of uh, rubber on the road. So this has a large impact as to how your bike is riding and handling. So. Here we have, uh, again, the Rubino, uh, Vittoria Rubino Pro, which is my personal selection. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but it has an inflate to uh, tire pressure. So uh, the minimum tire pressure on here is, is 100 PSI, and the max is 145. Um, so really, really important that you guys know what is the minimum and maximum tire pressure that your tire on your bike can take. Also, 
if you're if you have a trainer tire those are not intended to ride outside they have a thicker harder rubber on the middle and it's a, a shell or a casing uh, on the side to prevent that tire tread wear that a lot of you may see or that squaring off on, on some of the tires you guys may see from riding the trainer all winter so really really important if it's a trainer specific tire do not ride that outside you have to take that tire off take the wheel off uh, and swap it out so if you're using your power tap on whatever your trainer is you need to make sure you take that tire off before you head outside now as far as tire pressure goes um, tire pressure just like we talked about can affect the handling of the bike the road dampening uh, and also the amount of, of force you have to put to the pedals and the reward that you get most people Beginners to intermediates think that the tire pressure should be just between 90 and 100 or 100 and 110. It doesn't really matter to me. They just choose a number. Hey, Fred, what do you ride your tires at? 120? Great, that's what I'm going to put them on. I'm six foot three and a half, you know, 197 and a half pounds. And Fred's, let's say, you know, five foot eight and 165 pounds, there's a big difference there. And that tire, when I put my weight on that tire, it's going to react a lot differently than when Fred's going out. So really important that you know that the tire pressure is based off of either the maximum or minimum rating on your tire that's going to give you, and you'll see the chart here, and I'm going to verbally tell you the ranges that I use here at Human Vortex Training, um, the ranges that you should have for yourself, uh, because that's going to affect how that tire is. If you're running a pressure that's too low, uh, some of you, when I say this, will go, oh, that's why that's happening. If you run a clincher tire at too low a pressure, you're going to have a higher likelihood of snake bite or pinch flats. And if you, you run a flat every couple weeks when you're out on the bike, it's not the tubes. It may be your tire. There may be debris in it or glass, which we'll talk about at the end here. Or if there's none of that, you're running your tire pressure too low. So really important that you go based off of the chart, which you see right here. This is compliments of Michelin.com. Um, this is copyright them. So I'm taking this from their website. It's MichelinTires.com, I believe. Um, you can go and look. We're going to start off from the blue line on the right. So you can see each of these lines is based off of uh, the type of tire you're running, uh, the size. And then also on the left-hand side, you can see there that it's the rider weight, and at the bottom, you see it's the pressure given for that tire. So we're going to start on the blue line on the right there, and we're going to start at 100 pounds, which is at the bottom of the screen. I know it says 87, but uh, I'm going to go a little bit lower, and I'm going to say for the riders here at HVT, I like to recommend if you're between 100 and 110 pounds, you want to run your tire pressure between 85 and 90. If you're 110 pounds to 120 pounds, you want to run your tire pressure at 85 to 95 PSI. 120 pounds to 145 pounds, 95 to 105 PSI. If you're 145 to 160 pounds, you want to run your tire at 105 to 110 PSI. If you're 160 to 180 pounds, 110 to 115 PSI. 185 to 200 pounds, which is where I fall, 115 to 125 pounds or the maximum on the tire. Remember, that tire is going to determine not what I say or this chart says. If your max pressure on that tire is 110 pounds, that's the highest you can run it up. And if you're 180 plus pounds, I recommend going out and finding a new tire. Um, if you're over 200 pounds, you either run, you know, you can see most of these are based on uh, 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 range. You can bump it up roughly 10 PSI for every uh, 12 pounds over 200 that you are. But again, pay attention to that max pressure on that tire. So really important that you pay attention to the tire pressure. Um, you always want to pump up your tires before you leave. Um, the reason for that is you want to make sure you don't have a flat before you head out the door. I had that happen twice. I was in a rush. Uh, I was late by 20 minutes because I had to sit there and change a freaking flat before I could even go out the door because I pumped up the tire the night before thinking it would save me time. So if you're in the habit of doing that, make sure that you're taking things and, and you're, you're checking the tire. Just give it a little, you know, uh, a little pinch before you head out the door. Put your thumb, make sure it's not flat. Or if you're going to pump it up before you leave and every time before you ride on the trainer, remember, release that, that pressure at the back tire every time you get off the trainer and hopefully at that back skewer. Take the pressure off the tire so you don't get a flat spot in the tire. But you also want to run, start at the valve, and you want to do a slow look over, once over of your tire, looking at the top of the tire where the tread's touching uh, the road and also at the sidewall to make sure there's no fraying, no debris, um, 
no glass or um, any metal sticking in there that could give you a flat once you get on the bike. Um, so really important to take a look-see at that and make sure that, that you're not getting any flats before you head out the door. But every time you get on the bike, you want to pump up the tire. My front tire, I personally run 5 to 10 PSI lower, and that's really important because uh, all of your weight on a road bike, and, and these pressures that I gave you are just for road bike, mountain and cross are different, but um, most of your weight's going to be displaced on that rear tire, and that's why those good riders can actually go through and do wheelies on their bike. Uh, and we'll get into it in another segment here about uh, how to and why to lower the tire pressure that you have uh, for wet conditions, for uh, debris conditions, uh, or if you know there's going to be any snow or ice out on the road, because that will increase the amount of contact the tire has. But that's riding uh, the proper tire pressure. Take this chart, go to michelintires.com, uh, find it online, put in the bicycle tire recommendations, Michelin, uh, into your Google search bar. Check that out, pull it up, have this as you lose weight or gain weight. Really important, stick to this because it's going to affect the handling on the bike, the amount of reward you get for the pedaling effort that you're giving, and it's also going to make sure that the, the road dampening is there and it's safe for cornering and handling for yourself and the other people you're riding. Remember, safety on the road is not only up to your, your riding buddies, but yourself as well. And make sure that your bike is in proper working order. Now is a great time of year to take your bike in and say, hey, I, I need to have uh, a full maintenance done. Expect to pay anywhere from $50 to $100 for maintenance on your bike. It's well worth it. Change your cables, change your brake pads, learn how to clean your bike. But that's how you ride proper tire pressure on your bike for your weight. Weight determines tire pressure. Have a great week, and remember, train smarter, not harder, and it's all about you.